If you haven't watched the previous training video on co-authoring using SharePoint, I recommend that you watch it because I go over the basics about SharePoint, like how to upload a document to the site and navigating around it. In this training video, we'll be going over the versioning feature of SharePoint. Okay, what is versioning? It's the process of recording and storing changes made to a document over the course of its development. So in other words, if you take 10 days to work on a document, and the first three days you really like, but all the changes made thereafter you didn't, can you go back and pinpoint that time? Well, with versioning you could, because with that, every time that you work on it, you can save it as like for the first time that you work on it, version one, it'll be numbered number one, and then for the second version, number two, and then so on. So if you had 10 different versions and you like the, well, the third version after you made some changes, but not all of the changes, then you can go back at that point in time or to that version number three and be happy and not have to go through and figure out what you didn't like or what you do like about the document with all the changes that have been made. So we can go ahead and turn the versioning feature on to any of the folders within our SharePoint site. More specifically, I'm looking at the Documents folder, which by the way, if you don't know how to create folders and you want to create one for like the Documents folder, go ahead and select it. Click on the Files tab go to new and there you go new folder like I have one here spiffy in any case what I want to do is for the documents folder is turn on the versioning settings to create a version history for all the changes that I make to any of the documents within that folder to do that with the documents folder selected come up here and click on the library tab and go to the settings group and click on library settings and then under the general settings there it is versioning settings go ahead and select it and it's right here, Document Version History. Specify whether a version is created each time you edit a file in this document library. And what type of versions can you create? You can do Major or Major and Minor. What's the difference between the two? Well, Major is adding changes or deleting large sections of text, and Minor is like updating just a, well, a few numbers in a spreadsheet or changing the wording of a sentence. Nothing major. So I'm going to go ahead and allow myself to create both major and minor versions. So if it's anything major, we'll know it's going to be like 1, 2, 3, or anything minor to a major version. Like if we did a major at 2.0 and something minor after that, it would be 2.1, 2.2. Until we did something major, then it would be a whole number like 3 and not any decimal places after it. Then down below, you can optionally limit the number of versions to retain, like keep the following number of major versions or keep drafts for the following number of major versions. If I keep the following number of major versions to like five, then what happens is on the sixth version, the first version rolls off and it keeps the five most recent versions. I'm gonna keep it simple and not work with this here and then scroll down to the bottom. And one last thing that I wanna go over, and I wanna hit two birds with one stone, so we're talking about versioning, but also I wanna go over requiring a checkout. Now, in the previous training video, we said that we didn't have to require a checkout, which means that anybody can work on the document at the same time within that folder. Well, here it's set to yes, and I want to leave it as yes. So that way, if I want to work on a document, if somebody else has checked it out, I can't work on it. The best I can do is just read it. I can't make any changes to it. So I want to show you that feature as well. Now, since it's turned on, because I've been working on it and I had it turned on, if not, you want to be able to require a checkout so not more than one person can work on the document at the same time, then go ahead and select yes and click okie dokie. So all I need to do is to go back to my documents folder and any file within the documents folder I work on is going to require me to check it out. And if I just click on the link, it doesn't ask me that if I want to check it out. Like for example, first of all it says, do you want to allow this? Do you trust it? I say yes. And then it says, are you sure? Do you want to open up this file? I'll say yes. And then it's going to ask me for my password, username and password. But since I already have my username there, just enter my password. Click OK. And it opens up the co-author SharePoint, the document that we uploaded in the previous training video to SharePoint in the read mode. And I want to change it to print layout. And you can see up here, you get the option to check it out. So you can check it out there. You can see it's read-only until I check it out, or if it's already checked out, and I try to check it out now, if Carrie has it checked out, it'll give me a prompt saying, uh, 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 all you can do is read it because she has it checked out. You can do it this way, or let me close out, come back here, hover over co-author SharePoint, the document that I want to open or check out first, 
because the feature has been turned on. And you see the ellipsis button or the build button, the three dots, click on it. You can edit, share it, or if you click on it, second build button or ellipsis button, you get the option to check it out. So that lets me know that it's something that I can check out that nobody else has yet. When I check it out, you'll see that it's got this arrow that when you hover over the document, that little icon, it says that it's been checked out to, let me hover over it again, the default user Casey Kershaw. So with it checked out, then I can go ahead and click on it, allow, say yes, I want to see it, and it opens up and it doesn't give me that option to check it out because I have it checked out. Uh, whatever way works best for you, you can actually open it up and then check it out, that's fine. And you can see it's in compatibility mode because even though that we're working in Word 2013, this was created and made in Word 2010. So that's okay. At least you know what that means when you look up here on the title bar in case somebody has Word 2010 on their computer, uploads this to SharePoint, but you have Word 2013 on yours. That's where you're going to notice the difference up here saying, hey, I'm going to keep it so it's compatible with the earlier version of Word, Word 2010. You can see up here the save button as we learned in the previous training video. It has a little refresh or these two arrows pointing at each other or coming around to each other, meaning that when you save the document, it uploads it, but it also refreshes the document. So if anybody else has made changes to it, it'll refresh it here. But since we have it checked out, nobody else can work on it at the same time. So I'm not worried about that. And then I can go ahead and make any changes to it, like there is no other. Let's just keep it simple way. And then go ahead and click Save. And it's uploading to SharePoint. Great. Now when I go ahead and I can either close out and check it back in. It should prompt me to check it in. Or I can click on the File tab, go backstage, and check it in right now. Or you can discard the checkout, which means that it won't save any of the changes and upload it to the SharePoint site. So if I go back and I just simply say, I'm going to close out. It asks me if I want to check it in now. Now, if I don't check it in, nobody else can work on it. So if I say, no, don't check it in, it's still checked out. In fact, it'll still show that it's checked out if somebody else has it checked out and they checked it back in until you either log out of SharePoint and log back in or come up here and click on the refresh button. So it refreshes and it updates this to say, okay, Carrie still has it checked out. Or in this case, I still have it checked out. So if I go ahead and click on the link because they still have it checked out, and I go ahead and click Allow and say Yes, there you go. It doesn't prompt me to check it out because I already have it checked out. So when I'm good to go and I made all the changes that I like and I want to check it back in, then come up here and click on the File tab, go to Check In, and there you go. What kind of version would you like to check in? A minor version where it has a decimal and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or the major version? 